Shalom, this is your brother Tazar Yah Ama of GMS Valdosta, Georgia, coming out again with another weekly lesson. And I pray that it be edifying. But first, I want to give all honor to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rekakadash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of GMS for teaching us the true knowledge of these scriptures. I want to say Shalom and Aha to all the Aquan and Aquat striving in the same true doctrine. Shalom. Today's lesson is based upon, you know, receiving that call. You know, that call to come back to the law, statute, and commandments. To come back to our true power. You know, the one and only true, true God. Yahweh, Baha'i Shem, Yahweh Shai. And with that being said, my first scripture is going to be Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. That's the most high telling you. If, once you come back to him, you know, you repent and you're keeping these law, statutes, and commandments. To the best of your ability. Hey. He'll deal with you. You know. He, that's the promise he made. And you know. We know that he. Once he made a promise. He hey, He's going to keep it. With that being said. I'm going to move to the book of Isaiah. Chapter 65. So like it. Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 10. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 10. Which say to the seals, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right thing, speak unto us smooth thing, prophesy deceit. You know, a lot of our peoples, they don't want to hear the true knowledge of these scriptures they don't want the true understanding because hey a lot of time it go against their their own agenda you know basically they want to continue to be wicked and thrive and if they're thriving in this wicked society they don't see anything wrong with it but the most high say hey, look now it's high time to come out of here, you know, out of her. You know, this this is not our rest. You know, this this place was we were in this place for being disobedient, you know, for punishment. We're not here to enjoy our punishment. We're here to, we're here to repent and come back to these law statutes and commandments. And the Most High is telling us in all these scriptures, hey, come back. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 12. Therefore will I number you to the sword. And you shall all bow down to the slaughter. Because when I called, you did not answer. That's another promise that the Most High made. Just as he promised that, hey, he would deliver you if you come back to him. Keep his law, statutes, and commandments. Be obedient. He would deliver you. He also made a promise that if you didn't, this is what's going to happen. Therefore, Isaiah chapter 65, verse 12. Therefore will I number you to the sword, and you shall all bow down to the slaughter. That means, hey, that word slaughter is mass killing. So that's what you got forward to look for. If you do not come back to these law, statutes, and commandments, repent. Because when I called, you did not answer. You know, you 
there have been situations where I know that your spirit had been vexed and you resisted the calling. You know, people have said, you know, I do it when I, you know, whenever I think I'm ready, you know, or when I feel like it. You know, they're different, all kind of different excuses, continuing wickedness. Basically, that's what it is. They, they, they're not really ready to come up out of this society. Like I said, especially if they're thriving in this place or they have some kind of consolation. They don't see anything wrong with being here. They don't see anything wrong with sleeping with another man's wife. They don't see, see anything wrong with stealing, robbing, selling poison to your own people. Just playing out wickedness. Anything that adverse to the Most High, you don't see anything wrong with it. All because you have a small consolation in this place. Whether it's a job, or you're thriving in wickedness, you know, just doing things that pretty much adverse to every, every everything that the Most High told you not to do, you're doing it. And since judgment is not expedient, you don't see anything wrong with it. And with that, I'm going to move to the book of Jose. Chapter 12. Having a little difficult to hear. Bear with me, please. The book of Jose, chapter 12, starting at verse 10. I have also spoken by the prophets, and I have multiplied vision and used similar tools. Here's the most high telling you that, hey, there's three situations where he called out to you, and you, hey, you ignored the call. He said, I have also spoken by the prophets, when you see us out there on the corners, in the hedges and the highways, hey, calling out to you, you know, bidding you back to the marriage. You wind your windows up. You cross the street, go another way. You turn your music up. You holler some obscenities out, out the car or out your truck. Um, rev your motor. Anything to keep from hearing the calling. With that, I'm going to read the book of Hosea, chapter 12, verse 10 again. I have also spoken by the prophets. That's, that's one. And I have multiplied vision. That's two. And you similar to the most I have shown you signs in the heaven. You know, in different situations. You know, whether there's weather phenomenons or just so-called UFOs, you know, and the list goes on, you know, these, all of these are divine situation orchestrated for you to hear the calling by the ministry of the prophets, by us standing out there on them corners, you know, calling out. Telling you to come back to these law, statutes, and commandments. But you pay us no mind. So, and I read what's in store. When you don't listen, don't be obedient. This is the book of Zechariah, chapter 7, starting at verse 11. But they refused to hearken and pull away the shoulder and stopped at their ears that they should not hear, like the puff adder. You know, an adder doesn't have any ears. You can't hear. 
you feel vibration. And you know, and that thing is why you close your ears. You know, you you two thirds, you close your ear because you feel that vibration. These words care these words the words of the most high your how about Shema was shot carry vibration. It's like a two edged sword. Cut a sun all the way to the marrow. Zechariah chapter seven, verse twelve. Yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone. You know, their hearts is synonymous with your mind. That's what it's talking about here. It's not talking about that vessel that pumped blood. It's talking about that organ that you think with. Lest they should hear the law and the words which the most high power host has sent in his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore came a great wrath from the Most High Yahweh of hosts. And you know, I read earlier what that wrath is. Hey, you gonna just like you being bid to the marriage, you're gonna be bid to a slaughter. So now which one you, you rather do, uh attend? Would you rather attend a marriage where the most high hey is rekindling his relationship with, with Israel? Or do you want to be a part of the two thirds that hey, they're gonna t uh, be slaughtered with that sword of wrath? That's a no-brainer for me. The book of Zechariah, chapter seven, and verse thirteen. Therefore it has come to pass that as he cried and they would not hear, so they cried and I would not hear, said the most high Yahweh host. He said, when he hollered at you, gave you a shout out, hey, you ignored him. He said, look, when you start crying for him, when you start, even if you know that you start calling him by his name, hey, he's going to ignore you. He pretty much gonna tell you to, to call on your, your gods that you will listen to before you wanted to listen to him. You know that you put that you idolized, you know, and let them took precedent over him. He gonna let you call on them in the latter days. Hey, when he cracked them skies. Okay, good luck with that. This is the book of Zechariah, chapter 11. Chapter, Zechariah, chapter 7, verse 13 again. Therefore it has come to pass that as he cried, and they would not hear. So they cried, and I would not hear, said the Most High of Hosts. Okay. The Most High turned his ears to like the uh, the deaf part, you know, viper, and rightfully so. This is the book of Luke, the book of Luke, chapter seventeen, starting at verse twenty-seven. And they did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. You know, as we often bring out the fact that, hey, Noah was preaching in the wilderness uh, to the people, rather, for 120 years. And they ignored him all the way up until the time that first raindrop started falling. Then they went to Holland for Noah. But hey, wasn't Noah wasn't anything Noah could do. He had did it all. And that's our mission. We pray that hey, whenever the most high bring us out of those streets and uh 
tell us, hey, you know, no longer go out and teach. We pray that we done did all that we can do. And that he's satisfied with what we have done by preaching his words. We pray that, hey, that the day come when he say, well done, my good and faithful servant. And with that, I'm going to move to the book, St. Luke, chapter 17, verse 28. Likewise, also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Hey, just as things going on today. You know, everybody into their own little situation. You know, they they are it's, they all it's to some of them into sports, some of them to just wickedness, you know, fun and frolic, you know, just everything but about the will and the way of the most high, you know, about his works. You know, all that his his ways, his will, his works are being cast aside. You know, people got more important things to do than to come back to these law statutes and commandments, repent. And come back to these law, statutes, and commandments. Everything that's in this wicked society take precedent over that. That's a shame. This is the book of St. Luke, chapter 17, verse 30. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. You know, it's, it's pretty much... You know, telling you that, hey, when the most high, your how about shim I was shot, cracked them skies. Whatever you were doing now, you're gonna be doing then. And that and it's gonna be too late to try to come back to these law statute and commandments then. It's gonna be too late. You're gonna be crying and praying for deliverance in those days. But one thing about it, two things for sure. You can't say that you, no one told you and you didn't know. Because, hey, the word is spreading. And it's spreading like wildfire. And it's causing chaos and fear in a society of people that know hey, that this that this place is finna fall. But two thirds just don't get it. Don't understand or don't and don't want no understanding. They want to continue to be in, in this society and being oppressed oppressed and depressed. They okay with it. The book of Luke, so like the book of Matthew, chapter 24, chapter 24, and verse, starting at verse 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my father's own. The red letter, this is your Howard shot speaking. So, hey. That should be enough right there to, hey, for you to trade. Try to get on the right track. Come back to these law stacking commandments. Because we don't, we don't know when the day going to come. When the Most High going to crack those skies. And when he crack those skies, hey. Two things going to uh, occur. Salvation and damnation. Once again, which one would you choose? It's a no-brainer for me. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 37. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now, this another scripture that back up what we said earlier. 
you know, in the book of Luke. So there's two eyewitnesses. Two witnesses to the fact that. But as the days of Noah were, so also shall the coming of the Son of Man be. That hey, you know, there's a possibility that, well, it's not a possibility. It's it's inevitable that a lot of people are going to get caught with work undone. You're going to be compromised, sure enough. And you ain't going to have no God to turn to. No deliverance. Matthew chapter 24, verse 38. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Two thirds going to get swept away in that nuclear fire. You know, one million degree Fahrenheit. Can you imagine that? And you're going to feel every degree of that heat. You know, it's not going to be no quick and painless situation. Man. See that your eyes going to melt in the socket. Your tongue going to melt in your mouth. The heat going to be so intense. That, hey, your flesh going to melt off your bones. And the Most High going to leave the spirit in you to feel each and every degree of that heat. Just think about that. Let that resonate in your, in your spirit, in your mind. Just think about that. Okay. With that then said, I'm going to close out. All praises and honor to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rekakadash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of GMS for teaching us the true knowledge of these scriptures. I want to say Shalom and a heart to all the sisters and brothers that's thriving and striving in this same true doctrine. Shalom.